Hi everyone, it's Rachel, and in this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different, just a little bit, but also not really, because I'm going to be testing some polymer clay, so really it's nothing different at all, um, but I'm going to be testing polymer clay from Kmart. So I'm really excited to try this clay out today. In Australia, Kmart is like the shop that you go to where you don't really need anything but you walk out of everything. So I've got a lot of US followers. Kmart in Australia is very different to Kmart in America. Um, our Kmart is almost more like your target, where it's like a spot where you go to hang out and you're not really looking for anything in particular, but then you find a bunch of stuff and you end up buying it anyway because it's really cheap. So that's what our Kmart is like. There's literally memes about how good it is. Um, but I recently found in my local Kmart, they had stocked four packets of polymer clay. Now this is kind of newish. I think it came out last year. Um, but in my local Kmart, they only had like one pack of the colors, which I mean, they don't really have much range anyway, but they only have one pack. And then when I was there recently, they had all the colors. So I thought I better buy that. I really want to test it out and kind of compare the quality and, I don't know, the texture and all of that to the clay that I usually use. And the main brands that I use uh, for my charms are Sculpey, Fimo, and Primo would be the main ones. So Kmart have made four different packets of clay and the brand is Anco, so that's kind of like their home brand. There's not that much range though, so I'm going to go through it. So this is what the packs of clay look like. They each come with five blocks of 28 grams. So it's an oven baked clay, which we know polymer clay is. This pack is the neutral tones. So I'm just looking, they don't include the shade names anywhere on the packet, but I'm looking on the website on my giant iPad, and the ones in the neutral pack are called White, Nude, Tan, Brown, and Black. We then have this pack here, which does look very similar. Um, anyway, it's called Pinks, or Pink Tones. And the shade names are light pink, blush pink, musk pink, rust, and wine. There's then this pack here, which is called Earthy Tones. And the shade names are cream, light grey, khaki, mustard, and terracotta. And then there's the pack that has more pastels in it, which is probably the colours that I would lean more towards. So these colours are called Pink, Lilac, Aqua, Peach and Gold. I did also forget to mention each of these packs from Kmart are $5.50 Australian. Um, it's so $5.50 for five little blocks. I'm not quite sure how that works out in relevance to the Sculpey and the Primo and everything else we get here. Um, so I'll have to do a little bit of calculating. It does also say on the back of the packets and on the website that you need to put it in an oven at 130 degrees Celsius or 120 fan forced, which is what I usually bake all my clay at, and bake it for 15 to 30 minutes. Um, it says that the baking time may vary according to clay thickness. So the general rule is to allow for 15 minutes per six millimeters of thickness. But then in saying that, it says, do not succeed recommended baking time of 30 minutes, which I thought was really strange because usually if you bake polymer clay longer, it gets stronger. Um, so I thought that was interesting, especially if you make something quite large and you do need to kind of follow the 15 minute rule, um, you would need to bake it longer than 30 minutes. So I'm not quite sure what that is about, but if it's normal polymer clay, then it should be fine to be baked over 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm also going to say with this color range, um, it's very limited. I'm thinking they're more aiming at this polymer clay towards people who make clay jewelry and beads and lanyards and all those sorts of things because there's a lot of like neutral colors. The only brighter colors we have is this pack here, um, which is the bright tones. I didn't even say that. And there's actually no blue anywhere. The closest thing we have is the aqua. So we'll have to see what I can make. Of course, I'm used to making polymer clay charms and kawaii designs. So we'll see how I can use this polymer clay to cater to what I usually make. The other thing I also picked up at Kmart was the Anko brand clay tools. So you can see there's a bunch of clay tools here. There's nine pieces all together and these tools are also double ended. So I thought while I'm testing out the clay and making my different designs, I would try to mainly just use these tools. 
and we'll see what I think of them and if I think there's kind of any tools missing. So I really want to just go through this clay in detail and see how good it is. Um, I've talked enough, so let's get started. So the first thing I did was sketch up exactly what I was planning to make using the Kmart clay. Because I did have such a limited color choice, I decided to go with some desserts because there were so many kind of tan and brown shades. My mind just went straight to desserts. I settled on making some cupcakes and that way I could try as many of the colors as possible and also have the bright colors as the cupcake bases. So here are the packs of clay in all their glory once I've taken them out of the box. And I did notice with my mint colored clay that on the back it was very dirty inside the packaging and this dirt was actually on the clay. So I'm thinking it's just something that's happened during manufacturing. I then thought it would be a good time to bake some little discs of each color and that way I hope to compare them before and after baking to see if they change color at all. As you can see there's not really much color change. Maybe some of them have darkened just slightly but I kind can't really notice any major changes and most of them were very true to color. So here's a look at the pink tones range and then we have the neutrals and I really love the khaki color. I also found that the white color in this pack was actually very translucent. And then finally we have the pastels which I found were the softest to work with and they did become very sticky quite easily. The other thing I found with some of the pastel colors is that we have these white bubbles appearing which is called plaking and this usually happens in translucent clays when moisture gets into the clay or there's excess conditioning where you've handled the clay too much although all I did was roll this clay flat to create the discs uh, so that shouldn't have really happened and that's just something to keep in mind. I then moved on to creating the kawaii cupcake designs following the plan that I made earlier in the video. So here you can see that I've got all the packs kind of spread out on my work surface and I also have the Kmart tools there as well. And I was trying to use as many as possible uh, but I just found myself just naturally reaching back for my own tools because it was exactly what I wanted and the tools that I needed. I felt that the Kmart tools were also lacking in a sharp blade to easily cut the clay, a nice sharp tool like a needle tool and also a smaller ball tool as well. Then here I'm just adding some texture using my toothbrush like I usually would and this color held on to the texture really well. I'm then also dusting it with my mixture of chalk pastel shavings and my fluffy paintbrush to make it look like the cupcakes have been baked and again the clay held on to the color really well. I've tried to throw in as many different techniques as I could with this clay to really test it out. So here I've got some of the white and gold clay and I'm going to try marbling it. So I rolled the clay together and then I'm just kind of twisting it to not blend the colors but just swirl them around together. Sometimes with certain brands of clay you do really struggle to marble the colors nicely because of different consistencies but I found with these two colors in particular I was able to marble them quite easily especially because the clay was nice and soft and they just kind of melted together almost. I then also tried to cut out a shape with my cookie cutter which worked well too apart from the fact that I couldn't get the shape out and that was completely my fault for just not pressing hard enough. Then here I'm taking some cornstarch or corn flour and I'm rubbing this over my clay so that I can put it through my piping tip. And I do this so the clay doesn't stick to the sides of my piping tip. I then also used one of the Kmart ball tools to push this clay through the end as you can see I'm doing here. Because this certain color of clay was quite soft though, I did find it lost some of the piping texture and I had to be very gentle as I handled it to avoid fingerprints and also misshaping the clay. The other thing I wanted to test was mixing the clay with my Sculpey Bacon Bond, but you can pretty much use any liquid clay really to create an icing texture, which is what I regularly do when I'm making desserts. So I scooped some of this onto a sheet of baking paper and then I dropped in a few balls of the Kmart clay and I mixed them all around. And as you can see, the clay blended really nicely with the Sculpey liquid clay to create a nice thick paste, which I was then able to apply onto the charm. So here I'm removing my cupcakes from their mold and I firstly popped these into the freezer to harden the clay a little before I pushed them out and this made it much easier to remove them. I think if I didn't add them to the freezer the clay would have been way too soft and they would have just got squished. You can see here with the purple clay in particular I've taken this straight from the packet and it is very soft and almost sticky and I found the same with the other pastel colors as well but in contrast I really like the texture of some of the other colors. I did find the texture 
just to be quite inconsistent. Some were really nice to use straight from the packet and some were super firm and needed lots of conditioning. And then others were super sticky and then just one gentle push on the clay with my fingers caused really deep fingerprint marks. I did really like the texture of the black clay because it was quite firm and I did have to condition it a little bit before using it, but I found that it was the perfect consistency for creating the kawaii faces. Here's also what my fingers look like after conditioning the black clay and I found that the staining wasn't too bad. Of course black is the darkest color and usually would have quite a bit of staining left over on your fingers after using black clay or another dark color. So I was quite impressed with the lack of staining. Like I mentioned before, I didn't really use the Kmart tools. Here you can see that they do look quite cheap and plasticky and there are sharp edges all over them and some of the ends are really quite misshaped and deformed. So I think if you're trying to be really precise, it would be quite difficult. I also found that as I was taking them out of the packet that they really easily came apart. So this could become an issue unless you glue them all back in. The one tool that I did end up using the most was the acrylic roller, which is pretty much just a miniature version of the one I currently have anyway. So I did really enjoy using the roller. So here I have the Kawaii Cupcake Charms in my little toaster oven and I'm just baking the clay to harden it. I have the temperature set to 120 degrees Celsius, which is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And I ended up baking these charms for 30 minutes. I then turned off the oven and I allowed the clay to cool down. And then this is what the charms look like once they're finished baking. I'm actually really pleased with how these came out using the Kmart branded clay. I think the colors look really pretty and I was able to create some nice textures using the clay. I think just by looking at it, you can't tell that this is a cheap branded polymer clay. To me, they just look like regular charms. There are definitely some cheaper brands of polymer clay that you can purchase where you can tell that the quality is lacking a little, but I feel like these charms don't show that. Earlier in the video, I showed you that the clay had those little white spots on it called plaking after baking, and I thought maybe that wouldn't show up on these cupcake charms because they are, you know, more of a design, a thicker design, and less of a disc. But I I did end up finding that it did show on the very bottom of the lilac colored cupcake um, and it just had a few lighter white spots. So while the plucking isn't evident on the whole charm, it's just something to keep on mind that it did still show through. I'm also quite surprised at how strong the clay is bonding to itself. I purposely didn't use any liquid clay to attach my little details on the top of my cupcakes and they do appear to be holding on really well. Of course, like any polymer clay or just any clay in general really, I think that if you're going to be using it as a functional charm, you would want to add some liquid clay or some kind of reinforcement inside just to be extra sure. Like I said earlier, I really liked how the colors on these cupcake charms turned out and I do think the limited range kind of grew on me and I think my favorites would have to be these two which are the blush pink and the khaki. I just think they're unique colors and I'm really a sucker for any kind of rose gold blush pink kind of shades so that's definitely why that one appealed to me. If I could buy a whole packet of just these two colors in particular I think I definitely would. So if we're looking at the pros and cons overall, the pros I would say is that the clay is affordable, it's easy to use straight from the packet, some of the shades are super pretty, and the darker colors in particular definitely don't stain your fingers, which means there's less chance of contaminating your lighter colors, and that's definitely a bonus when trying to keep your designs looking nice and clean. The cons I would have to point out would definitely be the limited color range. Of course, here we have 20 different colors and none of them are a shade of blue. I did find some of the consistencies and textures of each packet of clay varied quite a lot. And then finally, just as a minor thing to keep in mind, I did find a lot of dirt and almost kind of grease on the back of my mint colored clay, which would be a manufacturing defect. I guess overall, was this clay okay? Yes. And would I potentially buy it again? Also, yes. So that's everything for this video today and testing the Kmart clay. Look, it's magically back in the packets. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for lots more crafty videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.